Now, what are those compensatory mechanisms? So, why this particular compensatory mechanisms are activated? That is because of fall in the blood pressure of the individual and that is due to decreased perfusion to the organs. Right, that is because of fall in the blood pressure and that is due to decreased perfusion to the organs, there will be activation of the compensatory mechanisms. So, as in when there is decrease in the blood pressure, this decreased blood pressure, it is being sensed by the baroreceptors. Right, so this is being sensed. by the baroreceptors right and what are these particular baroreceptors these baroreceptors they include the carotid sinus receptors and the receptors in the aortic arch so right carotid sinus receptors and the receptors in the aortic arch right so these are the baroreceptors and once these baroreceptors are activated the afferent gets activated the afferent from these baroreceptors will be your the ninth and as i mean the cranial nerves which play an important role in giving the information to the medulla oblongata where there is sympathetic outflow is 9th and 10th cranial nerve. So once these baroreceptors are activated, the information is passed to the medulla oblongata saying that the blood pressure is less. And immediately the vasomotor center which is present within the medulla oblongata, it gets activated and there will be augmentation of Right, there will be augmentation of sympathetic outflow. Right, and once there is augmentation of sympathetic outflow, there will be release of your epinephrine and norepinephrine, and this will increase the blood pressure within the individual. So, that is one of the compensatory mechanisms in patients with the congestive heart failure, which will increase the blood pressure within the individual. And the other compensatory mechanisms if you see. So in patients with congestive heart failure, what is happening to the blood pressure? The blood pressure of the individual is reduced. Now as the blood pressure of the individual is reduced, what will happen to renal perfusion? Renal perfusion is also reduced. Right, the renal perfusion is reduced. So once the renal perfusion is reduced, there is activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system okay so once the renal perfusion is reduced remember there will be decrease in the gfr that is glomerular filtration rate now once there is decrease in the gfr the jg cells they get activated right jg cells they get activated and this particular jg cells they will release the renin and this renin, it acts on angiotensinogen. And angiotensinogen is the substance which is synthesized within the liver. And this angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin 1. And this angiotensin 1 in the presence of angiotensin converting enzyme is converted to angiotensin 2. And what this angiotensin 2 does? This angiotensin 2, it is a potent vasoconstrictor. Right, it is a potent vasoconstrictor. And that will cause increase in the blood pressure of the individual. Right, that will cause increase in the blood pressure of the individual. So that is the second compensatory mechanism. That is activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system right then if you take the third compensatory mechanism the third compensatory mechanism is non osmotic release of the arginine vasopressin right non osmotic release of the arginine vasopressin so arginine vasopressin it is also called antidiuretic hormone so whenever 
there is increase in osmolality right whenever there is increase in osmolality there will be release of this antidiuretic hormone or arginine vasopressin right whenever there is increase in osmolality there will be increase in arginine vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone both are the same and they will cause the reabsorption of the water from the distal tubules and thereby the osmolality which is increased will return back to normal but here in patients with congestive heart failure there is non osmotic release of the arginine vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone which will cause the water reabsorption right which will cause the water reabsorption from the distal tubules right which will cause the water reabsorption from distal tubules so these three are the compensatory mechanisms number one augmentation of the sympathetic outflow number two activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system non osmotic release of the arginine vasopressin now all these compensatory mechanisms let me tell you they are transiently right they are transiently useful to the individual right but in long term these particular compensatory mechanisms they will precipitate the heart failure now in what way these compensatory mechanisms precipitates the heart failure i will discuss that in detail so to summarize whenever there is heart failure there will be reduced cardiac output and then there will be activation of baroreceptors and that will cause increase in sympathetic outflow and there will be decrease in adrenal perfusion there will be activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system so once there is activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system aldosterone is being synthesized by your ras mechanism and there will be increased sodium and water retention and because of decrease in the cardiac output there is activation of the sympathetic nervous system and there will be increased peripheral resistance and there will be vasoconstriction and increasing the hydrostatic pressure within the individual so these patients with the congestive heart failure because of the activation of compensatory mechanisms there is increase in the hydrostatic pressure and once there is increase in hydrostatic pressure the fluid exudes out of the blood vessel right the fluid exudes out of the blood vessel and that will result in the edema right that will result in edema